Frank's Red Hot is the perfect blend of flavor and heat. So you can use an entire bottle to make recipes like buffalo chicken dip or buffalo nachos. Or even things that don't start with buffalo. Frank's Red Hot. I put that shit on everything. Craig. It's so easy to say goodbye to Cal Week. <laughs> That's all I got for you today. That's all you got. <laughs> uh, Cal Week. You know what? That that actually was pretty fitting for Cal Week. Just yeah. a total abortion of a football game and Cal bullshit all around from the from the get go. I mean, this game took Cal bullshit to a new level. And we'll say that which this which is, is tough to do. Before it's we get too to too far in, we probably should introduce ourselves. I'm Craig Powers. With me is Jeff Newser. This is Podcast Hello. versus Everyone. And yeah, we we are drowning in cow bullshit. Yeah. And if we uh, by the way, if <clears throat> excuse me, if both of us are sounding a little uh, a little under the weather, I think there's there's sort of two factors here. One is I'm a little under the weather. The other factor is uh is we both uh, spent our Sunday uh, cheering our faces off, or at least for about for about thirty minutes, cheering our faces off uh, at the Sounders MLS Cup victory, because we are both uh, large Sounders fans, and uh, we had a hell of a time on Sunday. So I, that's why the part that's the main reason why the podcast is coming to you a day late. Beyond the fact that we're not super excited to talk about the Cal bullshit, but uh, yeah, we're here. We're tough. We made it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't anticipate the uh, football game segment being quite as long as it normally is. Um, but yeah, obviously the game started out bad sign right away. Uh, Gordon's very first throw is a is an interception. Yeah, um, probably one of his worst throws of the year. Um, yeah. Or there was a bad communication, but even it seemed like a bad throw, which he made quite a few this game. Um, and then uh, one, takes one play for Cal to score. They of course. Uh, block the extra point attempt and return it for a two pointer. So we had scores of six to two, six to two. We had Very six Cal, to two, six Cal to five, you score. Yeah. and thirteen eleven in yep. this game. Those yep. were actual scores in this football game. Yes, and, they were. Yeah, and twenty to eleven. You know, so yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, the the cow bullshit was um, on full display. Uh, just weird stuff. Really, you know, obviously. Um, we can talk about the team's performance. Then we got to talk about that, uh, particular call, uh, that the PAC 12 has suspended someone over. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, um, overall pretty disappointing performance from the offense. Apparently Cal really does have, or, you know, Justin Wilcox really does have Mike Leach's number. Um, yeah, I'm almost willing to admit it now after that game. Yeah, that, that was just, they could just never get anything going, um, you know, even and then, you know, they really they couldn't finish drives when they did. Um, and honestly, they didn't have as many long drives into the red zone as frequently as I thought they would. Um, they really locked it down. Brandon Arcanado was probably the only, really only effective, uh, you know, the consistently effective guy. I think Aesop Winston had one really good drive. Um, other than that, like it was uh, it was tough sledding. Uh, the running game was tough. We weren't getting much out of that. Um, yeah, outside of the first, Max had a nice run, the first run. And, uh, outside of that, you know, they were running the ball a lot to start the game. It was pretty interesting. Uh, I think it was their first four or five drives started with a run, which is pretty unique for them. Um, so, uh, and then, you know, they, they were kind of daring Gordon to throw the ball to Max a few times, and then they were doing a hell of a job tackling Max when he was catching it out of the backfield. Um, and, and it did seem that maybe uh, Gordon wasn't hitting him in the same rhythm that he normally gets the ball in because it, it seemed like Gordon at the start really wanted to make a play you know, being back home and uh, was looking to push the ball downfield quite a bit, and, I, and uh, it was to his detriment because um, when the offense did move, he started looking for Arcanado more and all that. But, yeah, it was a, just a, one of those just classically frustrating games against Cal. Uh, the defense – uh, made Cal's offense look way better than it should. Um, explosive plays that Cal normally doesn't get were just happening um, with fair frequency. 
Um, but again, the, you would you would expect the offense to pick them up a little more this year, and, and not 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 this game, man. No, not this game. And <clears throat> for the defense, it, it basically was sort of uh, you know it was more of the same. They they held it together for a while, um, and then fell apart. You know, in the in the late third, uh, and then through the the fourth quarter, um, you know, they had in their last. Their last four non kneel down drives. I mean, their their last quote unquote drive. I guess it wasn't a kneel down drive, or maybe it was. They um, after the kickoff. That's right. They they did have one kneel down after after we scored our garbage time touchdown. But before that, uh, the previous four drives had gone touchdown, field goal, miss, touchdown, touchdown. So right. like an, an know, offense they, that had done nothing. Yeah, and and one of those touchdowns, the the deciding touchdown was a, an eight play ninety three yard drive, eight play ninety three yard drive. <laughs> like for Cal, like I just Cal. I know it's uh, it's it, you know it's it's hard to believe, and um, you know it's probably time that we just sort of say okay, uh, you know we're we're pretty bad, we're yep. we're, we're pretty bad, and and there's no. Um, there, there's, there's no real, real getting around that. And, you know, the defense is as bad as, as it can be. Um, the offense has moments of brilliance, but also has, you know, really significant moments of terribleness. Um, the mistakes they make are not just run of the mill mistakes. They are drive killing penalties. They are, uh, turnovers, you know, tur- this team turns the ball over more than, I don't know. I haven't done any kind of rigorous analysis, but, uh, you know, it, it has to have been years um, since we've had a team this bad at taking care of the ball. So, uh, you know, those are killers. Fumbles. Yeah. And this team, uh, they, they turn the ball over twice deep in their own territory, and both of those turn into short touchdown drives. <laughs> it's, so it's like – you know, they, with this defense and, and, you know, maybe this is a good way to think of it. I mean, I mean, with this defense, uh, when you turn the ball over, you're not just, uh, you know, giving yourself a, you know, no chance to earn points, right. It's not just zero points. It's, um, it's also with the defense, you, you're almost guaranteed to give up some points going the other direction. And, and so you have these swings where, uh, the offense doesn't get a, get any points. The defense gives up points. And so maybe you are, you know, minus, you know, where you might have been, you know, maybe you don't score, but you give them a punt and it's a long field and whatever. Maybe they don't, uh, you know, end up driving the length of the field. Instead, you know, you, you give them a, a medium to short length of field. You give up points. You didn't score any points. And it's a, anywhere between, you know, a 10 and 14 point swing to to do that. So, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's I think that this team's particular shortcomings don't play well into each other and uh it's, you know, you get you get what you got, which is uh me for a long time not really believing that this was a last place team and and now just having to say, yeah, like, you know, I I mean, are they are they the worst team in the Pac-12? I I I mean, they're probably not worse than Colorado, I guess, but it's like, you know, after after smacking around Colorado, but uh, you know, are, are you going to say they're better than Stanford right now or Oregon State? Like, are you these two teams coming up? I mean, who? <laughs> maybe they're better than Arizona. We won't know because we don't play Arizona this year. So, right. I, you know, I I don't know who you would say uh, they're better than right now, or you could say definitively they're better than other than maybe Colorado. And that's that's a man. That is a really hard place to be but you know as it is we still got a chance to make a bowl game and you know that would be good i think yeah pretty yep. sure <laughs> got a chance to you know we got the next two at home um with two um you know not very good teams um but of course we just you just don't know man like um the schedule's been tough but uh and the one not you know but they've played two you know, not very good teams, and they lost to one and beat one, and then they've had, you know, that. I mean, Cal's not very good, but at least it was on the road. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I mean, it, with all the bullshit, they still had a chance in the fourth to take the lead. Um, you know, they were in the red zone. Yep. And uh, it, you just it, they, you know, ends on a weird Anthony Gordon. Like looked like a design run. 
type thing. It was. Uh, I don't think it was. Yeah. I, I think I think he just decided to tuck it and go nice. They they had a a dude just completely unblocked off the edge, and I have a hard right. time thinking. A hard time thinking that's how they would have blocked up a uh, uh, a quarterback draw. So I, I I tend to think that he saw the breakdown right away and just took off because right afterwards I kind of saw Abe Lucas turn around. So Abe Lucas, the right tackle for the listeners who don't know everybody's name. Uh, I kind of saw him turn around and throw his hands up in the air. And, and that to me suggested that uh, there was some sort of miscommunication on the protection. And that, that happened more than once. Uh, it may have only been twice. It might've been three times. It's tough to say, but the, the only way a dude should be coming free uh, would be if, would be if there was something screwed up like that's like the way the way that teams defend uh defend us in the way that we that we block them you know there's really no way someone should be coming untouched really ever unless there was a mistake where you know a tackle thought that you know that that a running back was going to pick up a blitzer or, or, or something like that uh, obviously that, you know, was not the case and, and really frustrating that, uh, we're at this point in the year and, you know, and that happens, which doesn't really hardly ever happen with our guys, but, right. uh, it, it happened this weekend and, you know, they just, uh, you know, it's, that's where I go, you know, like they're probably just a bad team. It's like, uh, you know, bad teams do this stuff and, and it's crippling, you know, I mean, they, you know, to have, down you know turnover on downs turnover on downs on back-to-back drives where they're they're trying to you know stay in the game um man you know hugely frustrating i mean second half again they ended the first half with a touchdown second half first play fumble (laughs) next drive field goal and then next two drives downs downs and garbage time td so you know yay garbage time td i think that put them over the the (laughs) over the number for the game so i'm sure I'm kind of I'm watching bad beats right now with SVP, so I'm sure that one's going to end up on there. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That if it really felt like when they failed on that when it was 2014, early in the fourth. Yeah, like it was game over, even though yeah. they're still within a score. It really, it just, it really did. Because yeah, they, I mean, they get down, they have second and three from the 14. It looks like they're cooking. You know, it looks like they're headed uh, down. I, I think Gordon had completed like 12 or 13 consecutive passes at that point. Yeah, like so, it looked like hey, they figured it out, but then, like you said, it just well, and that's when they went on their ninety-three yard drive. It's like, yeah, it, you know, you could sort of talk yourself into okay, well, they hadn't. I mean, you know, one of their touchdowns was you know twenty-seven yard drive. Granted, it was one one fucking play, but whatever. You know, another drive was four plays, thirty-nine yards, which again, that's ten yards of play, but you know. <laughs> whatever and then uh and then this one you know they go they go 93 yards like it's nothing um capped by a by a 50 yard <laughs> pretty routine screen pass where uh, dudes are running into each other and falling over um it just yeah it's our defense in a nutshell and and the hardest part i think about this is that you know earlier in the year i think we said that hey you know i mean at least they're entertaining at least they're interesting um this has ceased to be entertaining or interesting like you know, they're losing in the same way over and over and over again. And like I sat down to write my Monday column today, uh, this morning and was just like, I I don't know what else I'm supposed to say. I I have no bright ideas. I have no solutions. I, you know, it's, you know, quit turning the ball over and quit false starting Liam Ryan and quit holding people, Liam Ryan, and maybe block someone in space, Liam Ryan. And it's just like, you know, there's only, there's only so many things to say. And, uh, there's, there, I, I don't know. I mean, is there anything useful that you took away from this where you're like, yeah, this, this gives me some hope or maybe if they work on this, then, you know, we we're, we're onto something. I mean, I, I, I just like, I watch that game and I just go like, I, I mean, let, let's hope that they're a little less shitty next weekend and, and maybe they can win that one. Yeah. That's basically, yeah. Like, all your hope is uh well Stanford doesn't look very good so um, and they beat Washington with their backup quarterback yeah earlier but they, and they also still. just lost to Colorado but so. they just lost to Colorado so yeah you know, I mean I, I was worried that great. Costello was back but he looked like crap against Colorado so yeah I don't know um yeah yeah so yeah it's just uh 
yeah, it's now it's just like, yeah, they're bad. Let's just hope they can get two more wins in the next three. Obviously, that means winning the next two. Um, I mean, but, like, uh, I can't I can't even work up righteous indignation over the referee. Oh, no, I'm not mad because, you know. Like, I can't even I mean, get it does. Uh, you, uh, Mark quantified it with some numbers on um, uh, impact on uh, win percentage, and it was a pretty big uh, – it was like a 12% swing. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, that's a lot for one play. <laughs> uh, so what that play a we're talking – For one non-scoring play. Yeah. So the play we're talking about, um, <clears throat> if you haven't heard, uh, so the Pac-12 has issued uh, – I don't know what you call it. A, you know, uh, I, guess, you know, I guess it's an apology. Apology and not a, there was definitely not an apology, but uh, the referee remand? was suspended a game. Big fucking deal. Um, yeah, but, I mean whatever. But what happened was so uh, when WSU was down twenty to four or twenty to eleven. Twenty eleven. Um, yep. They received a kickoff. Travell Harris returned it to the fifty. Um, I think it was a forty eight maybe. Uh, yeah, I think it was the Cal 48, just got yeah, just across half field. Yeah, the Cal 48. Midfield. Um, there was a legal hands to the face penalty called, which is a 15-yard penalty. Uh, it was called on WSU, uh, which put them, I believe, back at the 8. Or is that right? right? No. Right. right. It was the uh, the 18. The 18. Yes. So what what the penalty actually was supposed to be on Cal, and so it was a field position flip of 32 plus 17 49 yards right yeah um so it's wc should have should have yeah wc should have started the ball with the ball in the cal 33 in that drive wc drove and kicked a field goal to pull 2014 um you know uh, one thing i think about is they struggled so much in the red zone i'm not sure if it would have changed it a lot but it might honestly have. if you only have to make one or two plays to score a touchdown versus like going down the field right. uh, that's a big difference and you know if wsu gets a touchdown on that drive and it's 20 to 18 um that makes that, that makes a difference as well um right. they would be kicking a field goal probably um later down the road to take the lead uh 21 20 you know they're all you know all stuff like that you know um right. They're playing the game differently if uh, they get a touchdown there. Um, yeah, but still, you know, uh, given the way they performed in in the in scoring opportunities in the red zone, uh, <laughs> it might not have made it a difference. It might not have mattered. But still, it's a it's a pretty egregious calf to I call mean, the penalty like... on the wrong team, and and then assess it, and then the the so obviously the the uh, head ref called it wrong, like when he announced it. But the weird thing is that the ref that actually threw the flag didn't say, oh, no, 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 the ball should be over there. It should not be on WSU. I called it on Cal. That's a really weird thing to right. me is, like, like, why didn't he say no, like, no, no? Why wait, didn't this... he, like, blow his whistle, wave his arms, go like, hey, running hey, hey, in hey. and being like, hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. It, it's I mean, the other direction. should have known as soon as they were walking the ball that way and not the other way. It, like, it's, it's like bizarre. What... I know. It's bizarre. It's cow bullshit. Like it's funny. We thought the cow bullshit was done, and then that was released on Sunday. And you're like, what? yeah, it's like, yeah, that that's a new one. Yeah, you um, got like an you got like an extra, or maybe it was late Saturday night. I, yeah, I think it was. Well, before I think I went it was. I think what happened was late Saturday night. Leach told Chazanow about it. That's right. And then Sunday, the league came out and issued their uh, their little thing, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's acknowledgement. I don't know. Yeah. Not apology. You're right. It, it was not an apology. It was not like, we're sorry we screwed you. Uh, it, it was, you know, uh, this guy made a mistake. We have we are very serious about suspending him, and then we'll bring him back and, you know, let him be the ref again. And by the way, it's not like that dude did not struggle the whole night. Like, yeah. there was one where he uh, pointed the wrong direction on a on a penalty call. He he looked like he was struggling to find. It was what he said first down Cal when it was first down Washington State. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he looked like he was struggling to find the words uh, quite literally every time he he had to get on the microphone. So I don't know. I mean, I feel kind of bad for the guy a little bit, but I'm also like, yo, that's that's what you're supposed to be able to do. And I, I had never seen that's such before. a basic. Have you, ever seen that... him, have you ever seen him call a game before? No, I didn't recognize him. I hadn't. I didn't recognize him. Yeah. Maybe he's just never been the lead ref. Maybe. 
but that's the thing. So somebody said, you know, it may have been on the broadcast. It may have been Ted Robinson on the broadcast, but somebody said that he he was new, that he was new to being a referee uh, this year. So the the head guy. So I don't I don't know how how true that is or or whether that was, you know. What, but he certainly looked like a guy who had not done that very many times before. Um, it was really struggling, but you know, the, the more, the point is, is what you said, which is, um, how they didn't have, you know, three guys waving their hands going, Hey, wait a second. This was supposed to be going the other direction. Um, it, it's just, and, and that's why they, uh, you know, on the, on the release, they said that the entire crew was downgraded. You know, I mean, that's that's why the entire crew was downgraded, because, you know, they 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 do this thing, you know, where they all every time somebody throws even the simplest flag, you know, they five of huddle. them have to huddle up and talk about it, you know, which is maddening and makes the game take longer and whatever. But it's supposed to prevent this. <laughs> and it didn't. I mean, it's, it's not like, when a, you know, in the NFL, you see Ed Hockey Lee when like it's a false start and he knows it's his false start. He doesn't even like, look, he just like turns and like, he doesn't even move from his position. Right. He just turns and like turns right. his mic on and goes false start. Even when it's like a very obvious false start, they huddle, right. they talk. Right. Like, it's supposed to protect them from this, but no, not in the pack 12, man, not in the pack 12. Yeah. It's a, um, yeah, it's a pretty big, pretty big mistake. Like, especially from such a, a routine sort of call, like just to point which team it was. Like yeah. That's, yeah. That, that's, that seems uh, like it would be pretty routine. Yeah. That's, this is a failure. Yeah. You kind of feel bad for the guy. Cause if they would have just caught it for him, then no yeah. one would have known it. Like, um, cause you've seen refs screw up the, put the team before, but then that, you know, you hear the whistle sure. blow and they go, Hey, no, 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 it's that way. They go, um, Oh wait, never mind. We made a mistake. It's, it's actually this. And you go, Oh, and everybody wins and it's fine. And, um, yeah, they, they just, they didn't. And, you know, I mean, there was all sorts of other stuff too. I mean, there was, <clears throat> you know, I mean, obviously early in the game, you had a third down play on the second drive, you know, Gordon makes a pass that would have been a first down to continue the drive. And it hits a fat ref who can't get out of the way. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, like, I they were that drive felt like they on. they had had something going. Like I'm I'm still like I I'm like they're at least getting points on that drive. Like because he's he's hitting I think it was Arcanado at like the fifty wide open, probably getting another five or ten yards after he catches the ball. Yeah, and you're in territory. You're in Cal territory. You got to think at least three points is coming out of that. Yeah. And it's just like that's one of the cow bullshit things you know yeah. of course that happens like how many fucking time we like gordon works the middle constantly and yeah. like how many times like and, and you no know, he just hits it this one damn ref like can't get out of yep. the way on a, a very basic route that teams yep. throw constantly like yep and then the same ridiculous. ref same ref is the one who calls the uh the personal foul on the coaching staff over on the sideline yeah after know. they 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 screwed up not calling a, a very obvious late hit. Evan Weaver took on Gordon. Yep. Um, they didn't call it. Yep. And then they call a late hit on one of our guys, which was a late hit, but it was it was, it was probably less uh, like it was more of a riding out of bounds type of thing. Yeah. Um, there there was a little extra, a little extra sauce on. There was the a little extra throw sure. down at the end, but uh, but it was definitely a hit, but. I mean, the coach loses it, but you know, yells at him. But the ref just, the ref loses his cool. Oh, totally! Like he throws the flag, and then he's like, his crew had to hold him back, yeah, because he was yelling so hard at the at the sideline. It's well, like, that's you. You only react like that when you know you're wrong. Like yep. you know you screwed up earlier. True. Like that's that's when you're on defensive. Yep. That's all. Like yep. think about any relationships with like your yep. your significant other. True. When when you know that you screwed up. But you're just kind of like not into being accused of something. <laughs> like yep. you get the most defensive. Like if that's... you can't keep your cool as an official, as a referee, as an umpire, yep, whatever. If you have, if you cannot keep your cool, I mean, unless somebody said, you know, like okay, somebody used like a racial epithet. Okay, <laughs> you know, if that cause, if that's what caused you to lose your cool, okay. But it's like if it's quite literally anything else 
um, you got to be, you should be able to keep your cool as an official. And I know that that's like, well, you know, everybody's yelling at them. Why should they have to keep their cool? Because that's the fucking job. That's the job. You know, and I say that as someone who has been an official, I say that as someone whose dad was a high school basketball referee. I mean, like I, like I've seen it, you know, like I know what they're supposed to be able to do and, and I've been there and, you know, and I've lost my cool as an, as an official before too. And it's like, you know, yeah, I was, I was wrong to lose my cool. Like, it's like, you know, in teaching every day, like, are there times I want to, uh, just scream at children? Yes. <laughs> you know, but, but in general, I, I mean, you know, there are times when I maybe raise my voice a little, but it's like, you know, I don't get abusive. You know why? Because that's my job. <laughs> you know, my job is to keep my ghoul and not, you know, go crazy on a bunch of high school kids. So, um, you know, it's embarrassing when a ref does that, um, when his, uh, his, his crew members have to hold him back. Um, and then, you know, I mean, there were phantom PI calls and I, you know, and it's with all this stuff, you know, it's uh, refereeing is just so bad at every level. I mean, we just got done watching the Seahawks game. I'm sure a lot of our listeners watch that thing. That was, I mean, I mean, fuck like uh, football refereeing is bad everywhere. It's bad everywhere because it's an impossible job. I know, it's just it an feels, impossible job. It feels like we're, we're talking about this every week, Yeah, but cause they, they are asked to do too many things and enforce too many rules and do it in way too specific of a fashion. And it's impossible for humans. And so what you end up with is you end up with these guys who like the routine things they should be able to get right without any difficulty actually end up getting messed up because there are so many levels of non-routine things that they are expected to know and get right. And they never take anything away from the rule book. They only add rules every year. Let's add a rule. Let's add a rule for this. Let's add a rule. And it's like, you can't enforce those rules consistently when you have, I mean, how big is a football crew? Eight guys, nine guys, eight or nine, right? Right. So it's like, you know, you can't have eight or nine guys all on the same page. It's just not possible. Right. You know, you on what you know, throw to one side of the field that's pass interference isn't a throw to the other side of the field because you've got, you know, it, it's impossible. It's an impossible job. And yeah, um, it's part of what's making the sport very difficult to watch a lot of times. Yeah. And, you know, obviously an error like this is completely ridiculous. Like, and, and it's just like you just almost have to laugh at it, like seriously. And of course, it happened against Cal, like of all the teams. And yeah, it's just, it's, uh, <sighs> It's just something you got to deal with watching as a fan. And uh, it's like, yeah, you, you got, but yeah, I think it's kind of underscores one more thing is that this is not only a bad team, they're a very unlucky team and they're yes. both at the same time. They're, like, they're bad and unlucky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They've had a lot of bad luck and they, they're I not mean, bad they, because they're unlucky, but yeah, but they are definitely just, unlucky. They, they've definitely had a lot of crazy unlucky things happen to them. Yep. Um, That's true. But yeah, so and that was that you know that one, that one is almost like almost tops like just just like such a weird, a weird thing for a ref to screw up. But I don't want to beat that yeah. dead horse anymore because that horse is extremely dead. Yeah, um, it is kind of a pulp at this yeah. point. How are you feeling about bowl eligibility? How are you feeling about winning two out of three? Um, I'm still feeling pretty good. Uh, there's. I, I, I'm there's nothing about Stanford and I mean, Oregon state's offense is good. Uh, didn't look very good against you, dub, but, um, it one thing really that does concern me, Oregon UW. state, <laughs> they play their, their, they play their best, uh, on, uh, on the road, it seems. So that sucks. Yeah. Um, I actually think they would not fare well in, in some like shitty weather. So that probably will be in our favor. Um, because we were able to play pretty well against Colorado. Um, yeah, Stanford. I don't. I don't know, man. Like, I feel like it's gonna be. I. I think both these games will be. F- I mean, if like it's, we can't really trust what Vegas and what Bill Connolly's system no. thinks anymore. <laughs> no, we. Because I think you know we're still probably hovering around the top twenty-five, top thirty, and Vegas obviously still thinks that too. Because I think we were. What, like 12 point favorites? Uh, yeah, or something? we opened at 12, and last I saw it was 10 and a half. So it was coming down. 
Um, but still, that was like that was eye popping to me when I saw yeah. that. I was like, "Wait, what?" Vegas can't quit <laughs> like, us, man. Like, like wait like, a minute, Ve- Vegas has no idea what to do with us. Uh, you know, we we obviously we covered against Oregon, which was you know, which was and that's the only weird. one they've covered recently. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Cal, it was like, yeah, like basically like PJ said, you know, have you ever watched us, you know, play at Cal? It's like, it's always a train wreck. Um, and then with Stanford, it's like, I, I mean, I get like, like I get the, I, I can get behind the idea that we're favored, you know, but oh, definitely I, we're at home. I don't, but I, I think, don't know how we land on almost two touchdowns. I think, I think our offense is the superlative difference there. Like that's our offense is so good that like. I mean, you would think. <laughs> and I think that's why they, because Stanford but, doesn't have doesn't have a good offense, doesn't have a good defense. They're like, well, WC's but, offense at home, you know, whatever. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, this could be Colorado all over again. Um, could be, they, like they it seem, very well could be. I think they they're seem roughly very the similar, similar quality of team. Yeah, they seem very similar, and, and I do think we play better at home. And you know, and Stanford's a little more balanced in terms of like they they're not like a. A, a ridiculously bad defense and a really right. good offense or other right. way around. They're more of just not Mediocre good at anything. Boat, yeah. 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 So, uh, I mean, I think despite what happened in Colorado, I think Costello is, uh, makes them better. Yeah. He obviously he's still, pretty um, so that's, that, that obviously gives you a little more anxiety about it, but we'll get into that game on Friday. Yeah. Um, we always run down the pack 12 really boring week in the pack 12. Yeah. Because uh, Oregon and Utah are both off, yeah. so those are the only games of consequence at this point. Yeah. Um, USC beats Arizona State, of course, because no, because like after beating us, Arizona State has now lost three in a row. Yep, of course, of course, of course they have. Um, and I you, joked uh, too after that game. I joked. I was like, I, I, I can't remember if I said it on the podcast, but I know I tweeted it at an Arizona State fan who was a little chippy, and I was like. It's going to be real fun watching you guys lose uh, four out of your last six, and they are well on their way to that one because I was not convinced they were actually any good, uh, even though they were ranked. And I know our, a lot of our fans sort of sort of hung their hats on uh, uh, on the fact that it was a, a loss to a ranked team. But, man, it uh, – Yeah. Yeah. Not so much. No. No. Uh, what else we got? Uh, UCLA was off. Yeah. Uh... Who else was off? Uh, so, so we had we already talked about Colorado, Stanford. Yep. Yeah, Washington, just an ugly, ugly win at Oregon State. Yep. But uh, I would take ugly wins at this point. So. Yeah, and uh, you know Washington. The, the biggest thing was that Washington did not make Oregon State's defense look bad, which I don't yeah. know if that makes me feel. Yeah, more... Eason had an off his he had worst a game. Day. Uh, I don't know if that makes me feel more uh, scared of Oregon State's defense or more uh, feel better about, you know, potentially what we might see in the Apple Cup. But I'm kind of starting to feel that Eason is kind of getting in his head, his yeah. own head a bit. Yeah, like he seems so. to be, he seems to be regressing. Well, Brock Heward said, you know, he reminds him, Eason reminds him of him, you know, feeling the weight of the world on his shoulders and football isn't fun anymore. Well, I don't, I don't know what weight he would have. At <laughs> UW is six and four, like they're they're aiming for the Holiday Bowl right now as like their their top you know goal. Uh, so I don't. I, I get the feeling that Mr. Jacob Eason really only cares about one thing, and that's his draft stock. That's just kind of the. You know what really looks really bad? Going sixteen and thirty two for one seventy five and two picks against Oregon State. <laughs> against Oregon freaking state. The good news is that game was uh, taking place in the middle of the night on the East Coast uh, on a Friday night. So, and and Washington isn't him, ranked or anything, so most people aren't even paying attention to their games at yeah. this point, like just like us. And so it's yeah, yeah. It was a very weak, weak slate of football games this week. Yeah, um, are we are we forgetting? Well, one? pretty much every week is weak, unless you know. I mean, just excluding. Uh, you know, Oregon and Utah. I mean, everything. Everybody else is in that same like there, four or five or four or five win ballpark. It's crazy. Am I, am I forgetting a game? I feel like there was one more game. I don't know, man. No, Arizona was a bunch of teams were off. Like yeah. there was a lot of buys this week. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, it's uh. 
I mean, if there's any year for two teams to get through with one loss, like this is the year. It, it's going to take a colossal fuck up on, on either of them. Yeah. I mean, I mean I, it is I, pretty I, funny I, that they've, you know, this is the year that, uh, you know, you've got these two teams at the top and everybody else is, you know. It's finally what they needed. Of course, Utah had to lose to USC, but um, <laughs> yeah, at least I, Oregon stayed clean in conference play. Um, and they're, you know, the SEC loss. Uh, um, but yeah, you know, still, you know, they, they just need to take care of business and then. Yeah. I mean, if they a, both went out until the PAC 12 championship, the winner I believe is going to be in the CFP. I really do. Like I just, yeah, I, I do. Can't, I think enough teams will lose. And I and can't see that, him leaving that, out that, a conference that, champ and you know, I, yeah. So. Yeah, especially because they're both slotted ahead of Oklahoma right now. Yeah, and if they keep winning, they're going to – I mean, you, you like to say they're going to keep moving up, but maybe they don't. Well, right? WSU you didn't last year. Yeah, well – WSU was an eight at this point well, last year and then won two games and didn't move a budge, yeah. including one sixty nine to 28 yeah. and didn't move a budge. Well, move, we've – you know, anything. we've been over that one. It's it's all – I mean, it's the same reason why Minnesota was 8-0 and ranked 17th, right? You know, if you start the year, if nobody thinks you're good when you start the year, you know. Now, Minnesota is going to be really interesting to see how high Minnesota gets this week after beating Penn State. You know, okay, so they're they're what? They're 9-0 and now, right? 9-0 and or 8-0? I mean, I don't know how you don't. like if Whatever you're, they if you're, if you're, how, if you're how take... are. They, how are they not in the top five or six? Yeah, that's what, yeah. If, if, the, if the CFP is taking its own rankings seriously. But they don't. You, I mean, yeah. This is why it, they it, say I, they do, but they don't. I, the, when they first released this, when they first announced this, when they start saying they were going to do the top twenty-five or whatever, starting in week whatever they, week nine or whatever they do it in. Yep. I was like, why are you doing that? It should just be at the end of the year. Like that's the yeah. only one. That should, I know what they do it to build. Like it's 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 marketing. Yeah, it's TV. But there was already rankings that existed, so I don't know why. Like you still have AP and coaches yeah. poll rankings. Yeah. Like you still get to use those, but um. But yeah, they like to talk about okay, this team can move up and this team move down. Of course, everyone still talks about it in the traditional way, where like you lose, you move up, you win, you move, or you know lose, you move down, win, you move up. But you know the college football playoff rankings have followed that sometimes, but they don't always follow that. But like it's. I don't know, like in in uh, in college basketball, you have your AP rankings all year, and then no one has any idea what the selection committee is going to do. You know, like there's there's not like selection committee releasing uh, brackets every every week in the last you know six weeks. They or whatever. did though start doing the top, you know, four whatever top four seeds right in each region. Yeah, the last month or so, right? Didn't they, they start doing, doing that, that last year, where they released like the basically the top sixteen teams? Mm. I think. Yeah. So that's, but it obviously too much, much far less, less fanfare. Right? Yeah, that's that's far less consequential, I think, too, at, than right. the college football rankings right. are. Um, because yeah, they they do that initial ranking, and a lot of the expectations of the teams is built on that. Like, yeah, yeah. Minnesota probably should move up to five or six. If Penn state is really a number four team was the number four team last week in their eyes. Yeah. Like, are, are they suddenly not like, that's, right. that's the thing is like, uh, they act like they're, I don't know, like it's because it can change week to week. Right. And... You can end up talking yourself in circles with the logic or lack thereof as they try so they'll be like oh no we're you know give us a good win and then you know you you get a good win and then it's well you know it's the the eye test it's you know what i mean they just they move the goalposts all over the place and it's the eye test really just means who was ranked or you know before the season yeah who was ranked before the season exactly because that's what you're basing your eye test on what it means and the eye test is preconceived notion is what that is so yeah and and yeah so uh how far do you think uh one of the college games of the year was you know i mean it, and it lived up to it was lsu and alabama that was awesome do you think alabama drops much um you know i i, I don't know 
I don't know. That's a good. Question. I was really hoping. Sorry, Sutra, but I was really hoping that uh, <laughs> that LSU would just you know just drop keep, the keep the pedal in the middle, and they they had a chance to. They, they had like did. a fourth and three. Yeah, they did in Bama territory, and didn't go for it, and yeah. then Bama started their comeback from there. But yeah, but yeah, but um, yeah, so. I don't like. I was hoping they would just so we'd have something more decisive, so we wouldn't have these like multiple teams in the SEC nonsense. And but there's I, still I think time it, for that to go sideways. Yeah, I mean, there's, I, there's still time for more losses in there. Bama is definitely not the dominant. I mean, they're obviously. I think they're one of the best teams in the country, but of they course. they're not the they're not the dominant force not that the they have ball been. They were. But they, I think they're still getting that sort of view. But it's interesting that they're not viewing Clemson really that well like it that was interesting to me that like clemson is not just getting slotted in there because they've won it you know yeah like they but that now that their benefit because the fact that other teams will play each other and clemson never plays anyone good so yeah um they, like well, they're no you know I mean, they're in pretty much no danger of losing yeah um but uh but yeah so this little they'll, they'll get in there eventually because they don't have to play anyone but um but yeah, they're they're not going. They're not they're not hosting fucking Joe Burrow at home. Um, no, no like, damn, not. he's good. By the way, yeah, no LSU. I was so glad LSU won that game just because they're really fun to watch. Yeah, um, that's a hell of a team. And uh, I, you know, Coach O, man. Before you know, after last week's ranking, when I saw that uh, Ohio State was number one, I was like, well, that's bullshit. <laughs> like, like LSU's the best team in the country. And then, uh, you know, watching watching LSU beat Alabama, I was like, yeah, LSU's the best team in the country. <laughs> you know, I mean, Ohio State's really good, too. I, you know, we'll see what happens with Chase Young. Um, I'm still waiting for waiting for someone to do uh, kind of what. So I don't know if you saw this, but Memphis basketball had a had a five star kid who. Uh, got ruled ineligible, and then there was and they a, just played him. Anyway. Yeah, and there was there was basically a, an emergency injunction, and they they played him anyway. And then the NCAA released its little uh, snippy statement that said we we advised Memphis that he is likely ineligible, but Memphis chose to play him anyway. It's, it's sort of like the parent line where it's like, hey, listen, you know, I I told you that it was probably a bad decision to do that thing, but you chose to do it anyway. It's like. I don't know. I'm just I'm waiting for more schools to do what Memphis did, which is just say, you know what? We're playing him. Come and get us. You yeah, know. I love it. Let's and we'll it. we'll we'll just like fight this thing legally until the end of the year. We'll play the year. We'll have a great year. We'll go deep in the tournament. Our fans will be excited. Everyone will be happy. And if you have us vacate the wins later, who cares? Who cares? Yeah, does we, does do, like we won those games? D- no, d- nobody does, thinks about the fat the Fab Five and thinks, oh man, they vacated those finals. Yeah, d- do you think any does 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 any Memphis fan like when Derrick Rose took him to the championship game? Do they go, oh no, that season wasn't fun anymore? Yeah. Because I mean, their loss is pretty shitty in the championship, but like that season wasn't fun anymore. Because those wins are vacated by the NCAA. Yeah, because somebody else took, you know, Derrick Rose's SAT. Like, like nobody is thinking that. Like, nobody nope, Derrick Rose, that. they still got to watch Derrick Rose dominate and take Memphis to a national championship game. So um, I think that they probably still love Derrick Rose and lo- and have fond memories of watching him play. So I yeah. so I do think that that is the thing that eventually leads to the downfall of the NCAA. I don't think it's going to be paying players or name, image, and likeness, all these things we've talked about. I do think that it – because, look, the NCAA is the member institutions. That's what it is. And right. – you know, they, they, the NCAA derives its power from the member institutions. And if the member institutions decide they have no more use for this, then the NCAA ceases to exist. And I do think that there are more and more institutions on the verge of just being like, this is so ridiculous. Um, you know, particularly as, you know, name, image, and likeness and things like that actually do start to happen. Um, oh, yeah. I just think the institutions start to look at the NCAA and go, mm, do we really need this? Does this do, like, 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 do we really need these guys? Well, yeah, do they do, really need? Because like, how do many? Do they really many... do anything good for us? 
you yeah. know. How many, how many, uh, like every college bowl game is set up by ESPN yep. or no, CBS football or whatever. Is, football is completely every, independent of the NCAA in every, every meaningful way. And, but if you look in basketball, of course, everyone loves the tournament, but look at all these high profile tournaments that are preseason tournaments now. Yep. Like that are, are created by ESPN and other entities. Yep. Like they look at the the friggin' the, the the tournament in the Bahamas, the Atlantis tournament, and the the tournament there there's this played in uh, Anchorage, um, which I, I'm not sure was that just a rebranded version of the Great Great Alaska Shootout. It might have been, but they but probably yeah. did they kick Alaska Anchorage out of it. But I don't maybe. But yeah, but <laughs> but you know you had big matchups up there, like you know obviously the uh, the uh, the Hawaii tournaments. The, yeah. there, there's a million of them now. Like yeah. it, you, you get these huge matchups. You get these great tournaments. So why couldn't why couldn't uh, some? And you have the you know you have the CBI and the CIT. Like everyone can run a damn tournament. Yep. It's and true. so why couldn't why couldn't ESPN say, oh, we'll have the championship tournament, and we'll 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 we'll, have, we'll put sixty four teams and we'll pick sites and whatever. You know, it's fine. Like we can do it. Like and I mean yeah the the NIT has been running for years and that's not run by the NCAA or I guess it is now uh, but it wasn't but for it a long wasn't time for a long time yeah um, but yeah like so it's yeah like the the like there's definitely the infrastructure now and the and the the uh, the motivation like if if big like and that's the one thing where it's a little scary for WSU because if it comes to that where schools are just like, let's do it ourselves. Like, is WSU going to have the same standing that they currently have? Yeah. You know, Pac-12 school kind of grandfathered in for many years. Um, there's been some talk, uh, like, uh, Canzano, John Canzano, purported, like, maybe, you know, WSU should feel like the Pac-12 doesn't care about them because they're always blowing, they end up blowing these calls on them. A lot of people have been like, you should have seen 2015 Stanford. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah um, this has been going on for a while. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like it's, yeah, that's, that's a little scary for, you know, WSU, but whatever, you know, um, like the NCAA in the money sports, like, yeah, it's, it seems inevitable that they will fall. Like, yeah, I mean, they have a place for, um, you know, uh, our, soccer we'll talk about soccer in a little bit because uh, we actually have some coog news on soccer yeah. but like soccer and volleyball and all those sports um but yeah like when when there's money involved and and there's uh there's interests outside of the s- institutions themselves um yeah like this, this, it's only getting like it's only getting tougher and tougher for the ncaa to have any sort of power over yeah. anything and and uh because there's so many sources of income like it, it back in the day when it's like you just it was the town it's not like you know the people around them and stuff but now you have social media people you have because technically you have a lot of these kids they have like hundreds of thousands of followers on on instagram they can totally monetize their instagram yep. accounts yeah like they can monetize youtube accounts they yep. can monetize twitter like or yep. not twitter but like they could monetize a lot of shit yeah and like uh but they can't and, 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 but eventually someone's just going to say, fuck it, like pay me. Like, um, and you know, with the cal the California law and there's going to be, more yeah. And then the like school it. is going to be like, yeah, we're cool with that. NCAA is going to have to be like, no, you can't do that. Like, like I'm, I'm literally waiting for the day when the NCAA says this player is not eligible and an institution says we are playing him anyway. Well, they just did. You know what I mean? Well, they had, they had a court injunction. <laughs> but I mean, le- like legitimately saying, no, no, this is baloney and we are, we are playing him. And if the other team wants to forfeit, then fine, but we're going to, we're going to play it and that's it. And if you want to come get us, come get us. I, it, one of the things I learned, so I, you know, I wrote that, uh, that big, long, ridiculous piece uh, in the preseason about sort of the messiness of being a college football fan and one of the things I learned in the process of researching that was just how sort of tenuous the existence of the NCAA was for so long. Like we think of it as this, uh, you know, this, this, uh, I'm trying to think of how to say it, but just 
I mean, for lack of a better term, like we think of it like an institution, like it, 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 it is this big thing and it wields a lot of power and it's very important. And, you know, just sort of like all of this stuff that, um, that, that you, you typically ascribe to things that have a lot of permanence. And the reality is that it, it really was all the way until really kind of the 1970s before the NCAA was, was really as, as an organization was really on any kind of sound footing. The guy who was the commissioner for or the or the president or whatever for so long, um, I mean, he spent a really good portion of his uh, time for the time that he was the the president, uh, really just convincing people that the NCAA was necessary and that that the institutions needed it to keep a level playing field. I mean, the reality was the institutions like in a lot of ways were not all that interested in a level playing field. <laughs> they were just sort of like, Oh, well, we'll just cheat better than everybody else. I mean, everybody was for, for, you know, like for 70 years, everybody was looking for an edge in recruiting. Like, like scholarships came about because schools were looking for an edge in recruiting. Recruiting was an edge in recruiting. Like at first you weren't allowed to recruit and then people started to recruit. And then it was like, Hey, wait a second. And then, so then NCAA comes in and is like, Hey, you know, we can help you with this, uh, you know, this, uh, fairness thing. You know, if you, if you want us to, we can come in and, you know, set some rules and, you know, make sure everybody's doing the same thing like they're supposed to be. And so it just became like this, the NCAA, you know, constantly trying to prove its worth, you know, for people of our age, you and I, it's like, and we're, we're, we're not the same age, but we're close, right? Like it's, um, you know, probably, I know one of my earliest memories of, of the NCAA machine is when the University of Washington got slapped with their stuff oh, when I was, absolutely the same, you know, yeah. 16 or whatever. Um you know, and I remember when that happened and, and it was like, oh, my God, you know, the NCAA. And and now it's, you know, the, I really do think. The well, and NCAA... then you paint, it paints the, it, like, it definitely painted, like, when, when I'm young and I, I, I it paints UW as, like, this dirty place. Yeah, yeah. Doing evil right. things. Well, they are. Because they broke right. the NCAA's rules. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's sort of, like, all of this. Like, they'll even... Um, You'll even hear like this mix up, I, I, and I think it's entirely intentional. You'll hear people say that um, what they are doing, like what somebody was doing, was illegal per NCAA rules, right. and I'm like, that's not illegal. That's it's it's illegal is against the law. Like the NCAA is not the law. <laughs> you know what they did was they broke an NCAA rule. That's not that's yeah, it's, very it's different not illegal. than illegal. It's not illegal for Penny Hardaway exactly to buy a house for yeah a recruit like that's not illegal i mean it's or for you know chase young to take a loan like that's perfectly legal you know it's like there's all these things that are legal versus you know broken ncaa rule and uh you know it really doesn't take much what to, felicity huffman did yeah, that was illegal that was illegal <laughs> um, that was fraud it doesn't take much for the the curtain to get pulled back, you know, and you see that it's the wizard of Oz. It literally is the wizard of Oz where you pull the curtain back and it's just a very tiny little man with no power sitting in, sitting behind it. Um, the NCAA derives its power from appearing to have power. And the reality is if a handful of these institutions ever just said, especially a powerful one, I mean, look, that's kind of what North Carolina did with their academic oh, yeah. scandal. Yeah, they kind of went, no, yeah. no, we're not going to No, we're we are our own institution. And we think these classes were fine. They were offered to every student. So y you got nothing. And the NCAA finally went. We do. We don't have anything. Uh, you're <laughs> right. We don't have anything. OK, never mind. You know, I mean, it's if, if, if there's anything that shows how little actual power the NCAA has, it's that it's uh, the way they handled the Penn State stuff. It's the way they handled the Baylor stuff. Like they just, they really have so little real power and the, and the power that it seems like they have, um, is, is honestly very fake. And if an institution ever really was gutsy enough to, to just say, you know what, we're done or, or we're just going to do what we want and, and you, you can't stop us. Um, you know, if an institution like Alabama, for example, which is in their own little tiff with the NCAA over a player, an eligible basketball player right now. I mean, if they ever just said, all right, yeah, well, come get us, you know, I mean, that would be a real test of the NCAA's actual power. If, if one of those big weighty institutions, 
um, did that. Like I said, you know, North Carolina already kind of did it. Um, if more institutions decided they were going to do it, I think the NCAA would be in real trouble. And that's actually the thing that they fear the most, I think. Yeah. The, uh, it's, yeah, the, the NCAA is, it's kind of funny as you grow older, we were talking about what you remember as the thing how you become like so disillusioned to its power and to, into what it actually is. Right. Like it doesn't uh, exist by law. <laughs> it's not, then, a, it's and, not a government, government regulatory agency. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like there's, there's entire, like there's swaths of people employed at all these schools, like just for compliance. Yep. Like there's a director of compliance at every single school and then yep. they have employees, you know, like it's, yep. It's uh, it's because that is to make sure you're not breaking the NCAA's rules. Like, there's just so much to do. I remember um, uh, when I was in school, one of the one of the uh, bars, I think it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, Shakers, Mike's, Stubblefields, whatever you want to call it, uh, used a uh, Kyle Weaver's picture on their po- a poster. Like, didn't even ask him. Um, but, uh, WCU had to self-report it and like w- they, they showed that Weaver like sat out of practice for an hour or something like they had to like do some stupid thing. Weaver had nothing to do with it, but they had to like report it because they were afraid like if they didn't report it, cause if you don't, if you self-report things then the NCAA, it's better. Like it, like if you break it's, somehow it's breaking a rule because some business that has no relation to you uses one of your student right. student athletes right. um yes. on 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 a poster without him even knowing it <laughs> like and that's somehow an ncaa violation um and yeah so they had to self-report it and and like prove that he sat out something or or he had I don't, it was something stupid i it had a friend in the stupid. department at the time that's why i know this yeah. but it's all very like, stupid they um, I don't know, like if you've ever seen one of these uh, one of these reports that they they have to file, but basically, um, I, one year, gosh, this is probably three or four years ago now, but um, it, one from Boise State was making the rounds, and it, it just listed all of the um, all of the the stuff that they had that they had self reported. Um, and all these, and it was it was like it was a huge number. Uh, violations. Now it was mostly like super low level stuff, right? Like somebody bought a bagel for somebody they weren't supposed to. Right. I mean, it was stuff like right. that, but it was the, the astonishing part was uh, that they had to file this report and that it was, it was like for one, I believe it was for one year. And there was like four or five dozen things that they were reporting and most of them were so inane, like, like so banal, like they were just nothing of consequence, nothing of consequence. And they're reporting all this stuff. It, it's yeah. You know, it, it exists because it has existed. And I, I think if, uh, if they were starting this whole endeavor over, they probably would not, land on an institution like the NCAA. And I keep using the word institution with NCAA. It's not really an institution, like organization like the NCAA. Um, right. You know, I, I, you'd be pretty, be pretty hard pressed for most people to think that this works the way it's supposed to. But, you know, the people who have the most incentive uh, to change are the ones that aren't getting rich. And so those are schools like Memphis, <laughs> you know, you know, it's why uh, Alabama's probably not going to be the one to, to challenge it. You know, I, I say all those things I said earlier, but Alabama, USC, you know, schools like that, they're probably not going to be the one to challenge it. And it's probably not it's you know not going to be a school like Wazoo that, you know, as, as you alluded to benefits from the system. Right. Like we uh, we're, I mean, if we're, we're all being very honest, you know, we're very lucky, fortunate to be in the position we're in you know, as, as a power five school, because in a lot of ways we're we don't really fit. So, uh, it's not going to be a school like us or, or another power five school. Probably it's, it's going to be a school like Memphis, like Houston, like, um, you know, one of these other, you know, so-called group of five schools that, uh, you know, maybe has a little less to lose by just saying like, Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah, come get us. So like you, you're not you're not including us in your big fancy things anyway. Like obviously Memphis can go to the NCAA tournament, and so it's a little different, and they do quite often. So, but it's uh, it's a little different. Like, but in football, like if a group of five school if like Houston, UCF, or someone wants to be like, screw you, because we can go undefeated, and you don't include yep. us. We don't get included in the championship thing. So, like, what does that matter? Well, they did, they did come. They just called themselves national champions. So, <laughs> which you know, good for them. <laughs> which honestly, all the big schools have done that for many years. Yep. Like, I'm pretty sure Alabama claims the national championship from the what was it 2004 when they were the undefeated team left out. Pretty sure Alabama claims a national championship, in, or I mean Auburn, and then uh, and um. You know, if you look back at a lot of the year, like a lot of the claimed national titles, a lot of these big schools, it's a lot of like, what really? Like, come on, like you went undefeated against like the local high schools, and you like <laughs> called yourself national champions. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I think even um, uh, I think uh, Rutgers might claim a national championship because they were the only team to play that year or whatever. Well, yeah. The very, when the it was actually it wasn't even it, was, it wasn't even actually football or whatever <laughs> no. which yeah there was a there was an article on SB Nation which you know promoting the mothership but yeah about how there wasn't football in any way shape oh, or yeah. form no I learned all about that like for that article I wrote the one I referenced earlier I read all about that very first football game was like what the fuck like I cannot believe that we call this the first football game like it's it was it was basically like you know flyers up like it was it was weird. Yeah, there was like twenty people, on, 20, 20 plus people on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah whatever. Bad. Anyway, we are we 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 got way off topic. We got way off topic. Good discussion anyway. Well, discussion mostly you talking. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I like I like to I like to get you going sometimes. You got me going. Um, we definitely need to take a break. <laughs> One hour. I think podcast. you can figure out a spot to do another break. Yeah. Earlier, yeah we whatever. should definitely take one right All now. Right. All right, we're back. We're back. I stole it from you that time. You did. <laughs> uh, what else? Well, should we talk some hoops real quick? Yeah, so uh, WSU, obviously, we, we were all excited about that game. If you listen to the last podcast, uh, opening game, way better. Um, way better result than we thought. Uh, but Cougs have a you know a fairly tough one coming up. Uh, Santa Clara on the road, you know, because WSU, we travel on the road to play – uh, Santa Clara. Yes. Um, because we invited them up here last year and lost. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, you know, after, uh, before WSU kicked the shit out of Seattle, you Ken Palm gave him a 28% chance to win. Now they gave him a 35%. Um, WSU is currently rated number 133. Um, Santa Clara is 122. Uh, they have, um, they have a win over Cal. They have a win over a division, not one school. I'm not sure what California Santa Cruz is exactly. Um, not but division it, it one. Counts, so I think it's division two. And then because uh, those count now, they have two of those on the schedule. By the way, uh, they play Notre Dame de Namur as well. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Santa Clara. <laughs> Ken Palm gives them the old 100 percent win probability. Just 100 percent. <laughs> Just, yeah, <laughs> I love that Ken Pomeroy is not afraid to go with the one hundred percent. Like he's just—it's yeah, like, like they're not losing that they game. Will not it's lose Notre that Dame de Namur. Yeah, Namur. Some I have to look up three Notre Dame. Or whatever I'm sorry, we're, we're getting off track again. But yeah, I have to look up yeah, what so, the hell uh, this Santa Clara school is. But anyway, so they did. Yeah, beat, they um, did play Cal Poly and beat Cal Poly. Santa Clara is pretty similar to Seattle in that they have. They have quite big, uh, like heightened expectations. Not because they were that good last year, but because they were basically returned a lot of players. So uh, they were they finished last season one eighty six, um, and then started this season uh, in the one twenties um, because uh, they returned quite a few uh, players. Like they had mostly freshmen and sophomore. In their rotation, yeah, last that's year. what's wild is all these guys coming back aren't seniors. They're like yeah, yeah, they're all juniors. sophomores and juniors mostly. 
And then they have a freshman um, that seems uh, to be playing quite a bit. But yeah, so that but yeah, so a lot of the it's more of expected improvement because you expect guys to take big leaps. Um, we saw with Seattle, um, I'm sure some of it was we have a better coach and we have better players than we did last year. And Ken Palm couldn't quite quantify it. Um, but I think also some of us, Seattle probably just didn't get that much better just by getting older, you know, and which could be very much the case. Uh, although they do have a couple of good players on the team, yeah. but, but yeah, there's, and that can be know, tough. Like when, when you don't have maybe necessarily like, you know, great athletes, right. You know I mean? Maybe you're not just, maybe you're not getting that much better with just more experience. So, yeah. Right. But yeah, that, so yeah. Um, a lot of sophomores and juniors on, on, uh, Santa Clara. So, uh, their, their best players are sophomores. Um, they spread out the, and juniors, but they, they, they like, uh, they, they have uh, uh, some good guards, um, and they have some size. They have a six eleven sophomore. Uh, they have a, a six eight uh, junior. Um, so six nine. Uh, so they have all those guys who are kind of in their regular rotation. Um, a six ten guy as well. So it's not you know not a team you're going to overwhelm um, by size or anything. Um, it's, it's kind of, obviously Jeff, I don't know about you, but this, I mean, obviously uh, I don't, I don't really know how to predict, uh, the WSU right now. <laughs> like we got one game and we believe that Kyle Smith is pretty yeah. good. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I have a feeling that they're better than the 133, even that they're at right now, uh, WSU. Um, so, uh, but it, maybe just that first game was an anomaly and we don't know in a, in a positive way, but. Um, but I, I have a feeling, you know, I, you and I talked for the season, we, we kind of believe that this for Kyle Smith, based on what he had done before this team could land in the one, you know, 100 to 120 range. So, um, based on their, I mean, they probably performed more like a top, probably 80 team against cat, you know, against Seattle, but, um, you know, we'll see. That's why this is a really interesting game. I, I you know, um, you're, I think you'll be able to find it on stream if you go onto um, Santa Clara's website. Yeah, it's on the WCC streams all their games. Yeah, so. so I I I think I think it's definitely you know one worth watching. I think it's a pretty good measuring stick early in the season. Um, we said that about Seattle too, and I completely still believe that that was a great measuring stick, and that's why that was such an exciting uh, blowout win. Um, I think this is another good measuring stick to go on the road in your second game. Uh, they have a good coach. It's Herb Sendek. Like, you know, he, he's a good coach. Like, <laughs> um, he, you know, took NC State to a million tournaments and <laughs> like yeah. whatever um, and recruited James Harden. Yeah. And that, but, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he's a good coach, a g- good defensive coach. And, um, well, it's going to be I, a I, different kind of matchup than the first definitely. game. Definitely. Uh, Definitely. you know, her, as far as I know, is still running that matchup zone, matchup zone that he was running which, at Arizona state. So which the, those are super annoying. Yeah. Different kind of matchup in terms of, you know, the defense, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to break them down, trying to figure out how to, uh, you know, how, how to make that zone move. Um, and that's where, you know, a guy like Jalen shed, you know, could come in very handy, uh, you know, penetrating the gaps in the zone. I mean, one of my favorite things, uh, that we used to watch, you know, years and years ago when, when Reggie Moore was at his best, um, that was one of the things he was so good at is he could get some dribble penetration into the middle of his zone and just really dismantle that thing from the inside. Uh, shed could potentially be that kind of a guy for us. So, um, going to be interesting to see, you know, the, the, the half court offense was, was a little iffy in that first game. Um, you know, we obviously benefited from some threes, uh, early on going down in this game, there's going to be three point opportunities just because you're playing a zone. So, right. uh, you know, do they, you know, do they get three happy? Like they did a little bit there on, uh, you know, last, last week's game on the season opener. Uh, I don't know going to be interesting to see. Um, but you know, like I've said before, um, I think that they are more focused on playing good defense than anything else. So I think, I think Kyle Smith right now is living with a certain amount of, 
uh, raggedy offense as, as they get the, the defense squared away. So um, I, I do know that DJ Mitchell, um, that's the name to know uh, from the, from Santa Clara. He's, he's super tough, six, eight, two fifteen. Yep. Um, inside outside guy. Um, yeah, real tough, real tough. He's going to be a really tough matchup for us. Uh, we don't have, uh, we don't have a guy built like that. You know, maybe, uh, you know, Pollard's too big to guard him. Um, you so know. you should point out he was originally at Wake Forest. Yeah. So, so, and he was a straight up, not even a grad transfer. He was just a regular transfer. Yeah, regular transfer. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, maybe Ellaby on him a little bit. Uh, although LB is a little bit undersized for that. Uh, maybe Dion James gets some extra run. I don't know. Be interesting to see, Be interesting. you know, Coons, I would, I would guess Coons is going to start on him, but I don't know. We'll see how that, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So it should be fun to watch yeah, though. I don't know. Highly, highly. Yeah. I'm excited to watch to it. Get to a computer uh, and watch it. Yeah. We're going to have a good day. Um, yeah, but get your computer, watch it. Uh, the basketball team is interesting. Uh, watch it. Um, it's a lot of the things that would have may have frustrated you about watching an Ernie Kent team in the past are yep. uh, not going to yep. be happening. And they might lose, but if yeah, they're they not going to lose in a way, they're probably not going to lose in a way that makes you want to go, uh, break something the way it used to be with Ernie. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to say that there, there's a very good chance they lose. <laughs> like yep. it's, it, I mean, they're on the road. I mean, I mean, Santa Clara might be looking ahead. They have Stanford next. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but to get, you know, they're probably looking at this opportunity, be to be to Pac-12 school. You have them at home. It's a big deal. Um, this is a big game for them. Um, but uh, it, it should be a big game for us as well. Yep. Every game should be big. Yep. Um, we haven't proven we can beat anybody yet. So, um yeah, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a a, a close game. I think it'll be an interesting game to watch. That'll uh, you know give us some more information about the actual impact that all these new guys and Kyle Smith is having on the program. So yeah, yeah. And speaking of programs, obviously we're going to talk some soccer here. Woo! Um, the uh, Washington State soccer team once again is in the NCAA tournament. Not just um, in the tournament. They are hosting. They are hosting a game. They are hosting a game. So uh, they actually, so if you are headed to Dad's Weekend this weekend, they are playing at 5 p.m. on Friday. So, yeah, if you can get there just a um, little early. I'm pretty jealous of all of you that have hotels on Friday night because I definitely would have went out for that. Um, it's pretty, uh, that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. It's a it, I think it'll pretty 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 damn well attended, so that'll be awesome. Um, but yeah, WC Cougar soccer. Let me pull it up so I can get it right. Um, they are definitely the best program we have. Uh, they've missed the tournament once since, or twice since two thousand eight. Yep. And there's like five different coaches in that span. So, can you imagine if basketball did that? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, like that. We we'd be a basketball school if they did that. <laughs> yes, yes, we would. But yeah, um, you know Morgan Weaver is a super exciting player. They have, they have a lot of good players. Um, they've got the talent to make a deep run. They really yeah. do. They've got the firepower to do it. They they've had they've had a number of games this year where they have dominated um, in terms of possession, in terms of shots, and you know I mean just all the metrics that are supposed to indicate. Uh, you know, <laughs> strength. Um, they've had a number of games where they've dominated those numbers and lost or had a draw. So, um, yeah, like on Friday, like ending, on Friday, uh, God damn. Ending. So, uh, uh, UW had not beaten uh, WSU soccer since 2003. And uh, unfortunately that streak ended on Friday on a penalty. Um, kick. But again, you know, because of a late penalty kick, but WSU dominated that game with shot. There was some, there was a so they call it in soccer for or not a team save is when someone other than the goalie makes a save, and WSU in the second half had a had on a corner kick a, a header going straight for the goal and and a, a defender headed it out yep. like at the last second like yep. it was it was there it was going in yep. 
Um, so, yeah, they had some pretty bad luck, but they were definitely dominating that game. Um, but, you know, it's soccer. That's how it goes yep. sometimes. But, um, if but yeah. Get, if they get hot, you know, with their goal scoring just at the right time, I mean. Yeah, because they definitely have goal scoring talent, and they have good uh, midfielder, um, like defensive midfielders. And, um, yeah, they're, they're, a good, they're a good squad. Um, yeah. I, I'm – yeah, that they're definitely uh something to hang your hat on. Like if you if you don't if you never follow them, like they only have six thousand three hundred and thirty seven followers on Twitter, so I know why you don't follow them. So um but they're definitely uh something to be proud of at WSU to have any sort of program like that have such su- sustained success. We don't have that very often. And uh soccer has definitely been it for uh you know, going on, you know, roughly twelve years now. So, uh, and they weren't much before, like it's really, um, they hit success and th- through many coaching changes have been able to keep it. And, uh, now they're, uh, you know, basically one of the most consistently good programs in the country, which is, which is awesome. Um, uh, it's super fun. Um, it, I, I think, you know, volleyball and I think should be next, next week or the week after probably should be getting an NCAA bid again as well. Uh, so it's actually football is the one that's, uh, dropping, dropping the ball in the fall season this year. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, uh, go Cougar soccer. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else to talk about the Cougs, man? I don't know. Volleyball should be heading to the tournament here pretty soon too. Yeah. That's what I said to, you know, listening to me. Sorry. (laughs) It's getting late. (laughs) Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I think that's, I think that's about it. I think, I think that's about all we got. Hopefully we'll be talking about another, uh, another basketball win here, here in, uh, about a week. Yep. And, uh, I know that, uh, some of you, uh, listening might be Timbers fans. No. Oh. But, uh, uh, speaking of becoming a soccer fan, um, yeah, follow the WSC soccer team, you know, they, they're good. They're fun. Uh, they win a lot. Um, also, if you're uh, if, if if you're uh, up here in the Northwest and not don't live in Portland or Southwest Washington and don't have no, uh, you know, don't care about the Timbers, uh, you know, maybe you know another team you want to pick up is the uh, Sounders. Yeah, you know, the Mariners are giving you sadness, and um, you know, you've gotten sadness from many of your teams. Uh, Jeff, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm pretty glad that I've become quite attached to the sounders yeah, at this point that's uh that's pretty much 100 percent how i became a sounders fan i uh i don't know it's probably nine eight eight nine years ago and uh you know like when the sounders came in they were kind of a novelty for me and then uh kind of followed them you know they're a seattle team so i'm like that's cool i'll follow um uh, like soccer okay it's all right you know and, and then i start following them and then uh, i make friends with uh dave clark who's the was was the the manager over at uh, sounder at heart which was uh the sb nation uh, sounders blog and you know and then the mariners were super shitty like they always are <laughs> and i was like and the sonics left yeah and the sonics left and i was just like well in the mostly it was you know the sounders kind of filled my my summertime you know my summertime gap because the Mariners and they win, were, and they've always won, yeah, and they've always won, and they're well run, and uh, they have ownership that aspires to greatness, and that's kind of all those things makes them a real attractive uh, team, and their their tickets are affordable, and you know all those things are really nice. So, yeah, you and I, and the atmosphere year. of going to a game is amazing. Yes, um, obviously the. the I mean, and the games are two hours long, and there's not announcers shouting at me for two hours and there's not uh there's not music I mean, taylor twelman shouts a yeah, lot yeah but there's not but when you're in the stadium there's not uh there's not yeah, pa no, address just, yelling at you for two hours there's not no, music if it's shouting it's you. because we yeah it's we scored, we scored a goal and everybody else is doing most of the shouting right yeah so um you know there's no music there, there's just the you know the drum beat of the um, drumbeat of the supporters and the songs that they sing, which is, you know, just a nice ambient noise. It's, uh, there's not, you know, there's not frequent breaks for video reviews and timeouts and whatever. It's, uh, soccer. No, I will a say, lot of fun, man. So I mean, we, we had, uh, Jeff and I attended uh, MLS cup 
uh, championship uh, together on uh, Sunday. Yep. And uh, that was incredible. Just a, a wonderful experience uh, to, you know, uh, the, the vibe, the energy, everything was amazing. And obviously winning uh, was uh, amazing. And But, um, you know, obviously MLS Cup, like, there was people there that aren't used to going to Sounders matches and soccer matches. Um, the first half, you you know this as well, people are getting up, going to get beers, oh, going, yeah. to get, <laughs> going to get food, and you're just like, what the hell are you doing? It's yeah, soccer. It's like soccer. So you go you go get stuff before the game and you get stuff at, at halftime time. and then you go to a bar after the game if you want to keep drinking. Like that's how it works. Right. Like you don't I got <laughs> you my don't... two beers before kickoff. Like But I will but we have, we do have to say We do have to say. So in uh the centers it was a very frustrating first fifty five minutes. Um and I and I'll give credit to uh I can't I don't remember who wrote the article but there's a great tactical piece um previewing the the tactics of the match um on sounder at heart and i had read that and i typically don't read these things because like um i love watching soccer but it's it's kind of one of those sports where it's like it's kind of nice that i don't know too much about it um so it doesn't like drive me crazy as much as like watching football or basketball yep. does it's um, part but, of the attraction actually but you know obviously i was so hyped about this week i read you know, the tactical preview and it got me super worried because they're talking about how Toronto's a team that likes to hold possession and uh, Seattle's a team that mostly just like likes the counter attack. Um, so basically uh, it was almost a given that Toronto was going to have the ball most of the time. And then obviously that was exacerbated by the fact that Seattle was having a really hard time holding on to the ball. Um but then, of course, uh, Jeff in in roughly the fifty fifth minute decides to he needs to go to the bathroom. It was it was kind of a quasi. I need to pee. I could probably hold this for a while, but I'm but so you were mad, irritated. We were just yelling about the game for the first you know twenty minute, the first ten minutes of the first the second half. Yeah. I was and pretty see, patient I, I up tell... to halftime, but when, when things didn't change at all for the first 10 minutes after half, I was just like, you know what? This is bullshit. I'm I could so tell you were like, cause the way you said it, you're like, you're like, I'm going to the bathroom. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was just like <laughs> I'm like, nothing's going to happen while I'm gone or at least nothing good. Cause this is and terrible. Then, and then 30 seconds after he leaves, literally 30 seconds. <laughs> Sanders scored, Sander goal. scored their goal. <laughs> so Jeff, and, and that is, the Sounders, their third MLS Cup mat, like MLS Cup final, their first goal first ever goal in an MLS Cup final. Yeah. And if you're confused by that because they have won one, it's because they were zero zero and won in penalties the first time. Yeah. Um, but uh, but but yeah, so the very the, roughly 265 minutes into the their MLS Cup play, they finally scored their first goal, yeah. and it was a double deflection goal. Yep, um, the weirdest of goals. Um, and then you missed that one. And then of course, like you were happy, but I know you were really hoping for another goal. I so really you could was. Goal. I was like, please we, give me another goal so that I didn't miss the only goal. And we goal. got, you got, we got two very like excellent goals, like very skilled, yep. nothing weird about them. Yep. Just a good, two good players, Victor Rodriguez and Raul Diaz doing what they do best. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so it was what an experience, man. Glad I experienced that with you. And uh, thank you again to Preston, yeah. Sammy, and Michael for the Prestons for hooking us up with tickets. Um, and my sister and, and, of course, your wife. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was an awesome experience. So, yeah, go soccer. Um, you get to watch your team win a championship at home. It's fucking That's amazing. cool. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Um, next year we won't need Michael and Sammy to get us tickets because we have cause you tickets. and I are season ticket holders now. Yeah, I had that conversation with Amanda. You were like, oh, "I gotta check with Sarah." I'm like, "Oh, it's fine." <laughs> and so it, it came up like after after the game. You know, me and my sister get back, and we're talking to Amanda about it. And I'm like, "Oh yeah, me and Jeff hey, have season tickets way. next year, <laughs> right next to ECS. It's great. It's gonna be fun." She goes, "How much were those?" And I go, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I, what I said is like it's less than I spend on just buying random tickets off StepHub to go yeah, to the games all it's year. True. It is like true. it's roughly what it is. Like it it's is true. <laughs> and so I'm like, don't worry about it. 
Um, and it's like the, you know, two great, we have two great seats, man. Like I'm really excited. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm a, a Sounders season ticket holder and a Cougar football yeah. season ticket holder, just like Preston's. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So yeah, we had to talk about that. Absolutely. If we were to record the podcast last night, this would have been almost yeah, exclusively it would have been an MLS Sounders cup. cast. Sounders cast. We would have just like had to upload it to the Sounder at Heart Network instead. Yeah. Sounder cast versus everyone. Yeah. <laughs> be, yeah. It would be like Ladero versus everyone. We could not have recorded it last night. We would have sounded like the Sounder at Hard podcast. Like we would have been so tired. <laughs> like, oh yeah. She would have been like. Oh yeah. We so we uh. Great. So flat stick official bar of the podcast. Yes. Um. We, we went back stick. there afterwards, and I know you stopped by for a bit, and then yep. you know you had to go pick up the kiddos. Yep. Um. But uh. But Steph and I and Preston and Sammy were and and some other friends were like. Riding hard for a while. They, Steph and I left about seven fifteen, mm-hmm. so we were there a solid like four plus hours, yeah. just putting putting down beers, enjoying good times. Saw saw Rob and Brian and all of them, so that was cool. Um, yeah, it was fun to hang out at a Kook bar after uh, you know, but it was all MLS, and it, it's kind of a nice like you know. You can do things that normally would get you kicked out of bars. Like we were constantly screaming and yelling chants and stuff. Yeah. Um, my sister and I were just randomly dancing like idiots, you know, like, you know, we'd be, someone would be watching us if we were, it was a normal day, but you know, I was like MLS cup, everyone's freaking out. Yeah. Uh, it was nice that it was an early match. So yeah, we got uh, to celebrate. We got to celebrate. Yeah. That was great. Like lots of time, you know, we didn't get a pre-funk in not as much as we wanted, but because of uh, it was fucking crazy packed everywhere <laughs> downtown. Yes, um, we got a twenty. Yeah, we did minute our Mac shuffle Lamar to the concert. Match. Yeah, twenty concert. Twenty minute Macklemore yeah. quote unquote concert. Yeah, and, uh, then and we then, shuffled uh, to the, the match shuffle instead of the march yeah. to the match. It's definitely uh, definitely wasn't a march. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's ever taken me that long to walk that such a <laughs> short amount of time. <laughs> Yeah. yeah but it was a blast it was all a blast it yeah. was all amazing it was, it was all fun. unique yeah so yeah. anybody out there who's a sounder season ticket holder you know like hit us up next year that'd be awesome we'll be we'll be posting yeah. up at flat stick and yeah we're Ooh, right yeah. next to the ecs That'll unless i'm taking unless i'm unless i got b with me then i'll yeah, be like that's collins true. pub then we'll be going. To like if I got be, I, I feel I don't know what the age limit is, but whatever it is, I'm just gonna say she's under it next yeah. year. I feel like she'll be young enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, dude. All right, and the Seahawks won. That was fun. That was fun. That was like the shittiest game I've ever seen, but it was well. No, I mean not not but, in like a bad way. Like, like because uh, the worst game I've ever seen was that six six tie with. Uh, Oh yeah, there's been much that worse. That was the worst game. Seahawks games. But in this the was just era. like not a good. I mean, it was like excite. It was like high leverage, it's like but it was two like good teams playing dumb. very poorly. I, it, you know, it kind of reminded me of like the NFC Championship when they played each other. Yeah, like just mistakes yeah. being made, just except without many teams. like big plays. Yep. Lots of dumbness right. everywhere. Like there was lots of dumbness, and you know, yeah, it was. I'm I'm glad the Seahawks won. You know, yeah. We, we, the, thank you, Sounders and Seahawks, yes. saving us from Cal Week. Yes. Jeff and I are going to go. Um, I almost forgot we lost to Cal. Take Thanks. take six six take sick days tomorrow. <laughs> um, I'm feeling pretty sick. Um, <laughs> I do not feel good. That's for sure. But yeah. All right, man. Yeah. All right. Go Cougs. Go Cougs.